Hi everyone, I'm Jane from the OU. So in the study that Lorna, Sean and Liz shared with you earlier, you heard about how self-advocacy groups were using technology to support people with learning disabilities during the pandemic. And the study I want to share with you now, um, we wanted to learn about how people in other support roles were using technology. So that's advocacy groups, day services, teachers, health and social care workers, parents, siblings, other learning disability charities um, yes. and paid support workers. Um, so what we did is we asked them to fill in an online question. Oh, sorry, Rachel, for next slide. I practiced this last night too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we asked them to fill in an online survey. Um, and we also um, uh, then followed up with interviews. Um, so including the self-advocacy groups that you heard about before, in total we conducted interviews with 44 supporters and 20 people with learning disabilities about how they were using technology. Next slide, please. So the main findings were um, uh, supporters were using uh, technology, as you've heard, but they're also having to use non-technological methods like just the normal landline phone, but also posting out newsletters by the post and sending out activity packs by the post. And this was because quite a few people with learning disabilities either didn't want to use technology or didn't have access to technology. But where technology was being used, it was a whole range of things that were being used. But not surprisingly, the most popular were mobile phones and the Zoom that we're on this afternoon. And a real key finding from the study was that the supporters who were using technology to help people with learning disabilities during the pandemic were learning, having to learn new things in order to do that support. Um, and they were really problem solving. They were really creative. And what really struck me was that they just weren't afraid to fail. They were going to try something. If it didn't work, it didn't matter. They'd try something else. Um, and then... The other key finding was all the people we were talking to, for the most part, were providing remote support. They weren't going into the homes of somebody with a learning disability that didn't live with that person. And as creative and as brilliant as they were with their support, what they were telling us were is that they still needed somebody in the home um, there with the person with a learning disability to help. Um, often that was to help set up the Zoom, for example, or to problem solve if things went wrong, like we've had a bit, you know, sound goes or something like that. So that was that, that real important message that as brilliant as these remote supporters were, they still needed that in-home support, as we called it. Next slide, please. So we heard stories of people not having access to technology and a typical reason for that was cost, particularly for mobile data. Um, we heard stories of people with learning disabilities not knowing how to use technology. Um, and we also heard stories of people not having the right support in their homes to use technology. And this was particularly around care homes, residential homes and supported living situations. And we'd hear what you might think were silly stories like, you know, the staff in the home would have their own laptop, but they weren't allowed, the policies wouldn't allow them to share it with a person with a learning disability. Often the staff were, were, didn't know how to use technology and were said, oh, no, I don't know how to help you. And there are other silly things like the Wi-Fi just not extending to the person's own private living space or bedroom so that they didn't feel they, they could use Zoom, for example, without everybody else hearing. But there were good stories, and you've heard lots of them this afternoon, um, about what, what te technology could offer people. And those stories were about helping people with learning disabilities with their mental health, with their well-being, and helping them stay connected with family and friends, and particularly self-advocacy groups, as you've heard. Next slide, please. But a Another thing that people in the study wanted to celebrate and share was, um, and what they said they'd really learnt from, from the pandemic, was the amazing things that people with learning disabilities can do with technology, with the right support. And to be fair, some people were quite surprised by that and said, I didn't expect it, but it's brilliant. Um, and I think that's something we need to hold on to, is what people with learning disabilities can do. 
Next slide, please. So the kind of conclusions that, that we've made that we want to take to service providers and funders, CCGs and others, is, is how it's really important for people with learning disabilities to have access to technology, but they also need the right support to help them use that technology. And from the stories that we were hearing, it seems that that support can be remote, but also needs to be in-home support too, and that those two probably need to work and collaborate together. And I think there is a message there for those who are funding services um, and assessing and auditing service quality around just making sure that, that support staff know how to use technology so that they can support people with learning disabilities to use it, um, that they're confident in using it, and that there's no silly policies and, you know, and organisational rules in place that just stop access happening. So that's that's really our report in a nutshell. Um, we do have our, you know, a long report online, easy read version and a, a short version uh, with just the recommendations and we'll share those afterwards. Um, so the pandemic has been scary for lots of reasons, but it's also shown us what all of us can do with creativity and problem solving. Thank you.